Welcome to Learn Access. I'm Crystal. Let's build a database. The music for this lesson is one of my all-time favorite songs. One More Day by David Bailey. He is amazing. There's a link you can click to David's website. Just read the video description. Well, don't let the grass grow beneath your busy feet. Don't let the grass... For more great tutorials, visit our sponsor, everythingaccess.com. This is the Access 2010 Backstage. Its door is the file tab on the ribbon. This is what happened to the round Microsoft Office button. The left pane shows choices under the file menu. I encourage you to explore the Access defaults just as you would look at a dashboard to choose a radio station and turn the heater on. Defaults make your ride more comfortable. In the middle pane, database templates are displayed. We will build an application from scratch, so we will not need a template. Click on the open folder icon in the right pane to choose the path where your database file will be stored. One more day, you can hold your children. One more day, specify a file name when you specify a directory or in the file name text box. Click Create. There is a table we did not make, so we don't want it. Close Table 1 and close the database. There is another way to create new files. Right-click in the directory where you want to put a new file. From the shortcut menu, choose New Microsoft Access Database. Name the file to include the date. This saves a lot of headaches down the road. Double-click the file name to open the database. This is 2010, and here's the ribbon. You might have years of tears behind you but right now you got one more day one more. to make a new table for contacts click the table design icon on the create ribbon as soon as you click it the ribbon changes Now we are in Table Tools on the Design ribbon. Our primary key will be CID and it will be an auto number. These are the data types. For number, the data type is specified by field size. When a table is created, special thought needs to go into the table name and the primary key, which is the field that will uniquely identify each record. The table name will be contacts. The primary key will be an automatic number, so it will be different for every record. The contacts table and its related tables will be prefaced with C underscore to group them. Since the primary key field for this table will be used and typed a lot, it will be short first letter of the table name, and then ID. And here is CID. As you can see, it's different on every record. I'm number one. Who's number seven? By looking up a CID, you can find out the names, which are stored as text fields. Is human indicates whether the information on this record belongs to a human being or to an artificial entity. Three integer fields are used to store year, month, and day for date of birth. Dates are stored as double precision numbers with the whole part of the number representing the passing of each day and the decimal part representing the passing of time through the day. Age is a calculated field and uses this public VBA function. Specify field name, data type, description, and pay attention to field size. Besides making it more clear what your field keeps track of when you look at the design view of a table, the description is also used for the status bar text when you enter information into that field in the datasheet view or on a form. So fill it out. Well, don't let the grass grow beneath your busy feet. Don't let the grass grow above you when you rest. You got one more day to get to where you're going. One more day. Give your very best Don't let the clouds Ever block your sunshine Don't let the sunshine Blind you on your way You might have A year has four digits. It will always be less than 32,000, so it will be stored as an integer. Integer starts with an I, so just type I when you're in the field size property. 
Year, month, and day will all three be stored as integers. Since we have created the DOB year field, let's copy it and paste it for DOB month and DOB day. Save the table. Oh, no primary key. Access does like having one since it sees an auto number field. If we say yes and let access create it, it will choose CID. There is our contacts table displayed in the navigation pane and in the database window. Create a table for address information. Type the primary key and set the primary key by clicking on the primary key icon on the design ribbon. Create the CID field so we have a way to link to the contacts table and get the name this address belongs to. Fields will be created to hold two lines of the address. We will have city, state, zip, and zip2, and this will also accommodate international postal codes, especially those where one part of the postal code is before the city and one part is after. Create a table for phones. Select the primary key by right-clicking the record selector and choosing primary key from the shortcut menu. If information looks like a phone number, even if it does not belong to a phone, it will be stored in this table, such as a fax. Don't let the cynics tell you they know better. Better yet, don't let them talk to you at all. You got one more We have defined three tables. Now it's time to look at the relationship diagram. I love being able to drag tables from the navigation pane to the diagram. After the tables are on the diagram, resize them to show all the fields and rearrange the tables so the data that must be created first is positioned to the left. When you define a relationship, drag from the field name in the table to the CID in the related table. Unless you have a specific reason not to enforce referential integrity, check the referential integrity box. This will ensure that you do not have any CIDs in the address or phones table that don't have corresponding contact information. Hallelujah, you got one more.